we're going to do a decidedly low-tech test of the fly pad tray's retainability in the 737 cockpit, and then the iPad to the fly pad tray. These are just these are not doctored. These are normal, right out of the box. This is a an iPad 2. This is a, a fly pad tray. So we'll first attach it. It's going to attach to the cockpit. The test we're going to do is, uh, like I said, decidedly low-tech to. Uh, with a uh, foot-pound force uh, test, each pound of force equals one g. To test the uh, iPad, uh, the fly pad tray itself to the 737, uh, we test it in three different axes: forward, x, uh, upward y, and z outward. You can see that, uh, and with this uh, gauge here, as I pull, you'll, it's hard for you to see on the screen, but I'm showing 12, 13. 17, 20, I'm going to stop right there, pounds of force. This is a one pad tray, one pound tray, so one pound of force equals one G, 20 pounds is 20 G, so it's not going anywhere in that direction. The same way, it's not going anywhere in the vertical direction, if I just pull until, well, 23 pounds, so that's not going to go anywhere. Downward, pretty much obviously the same thing, and then outward, so I'm pulling 6, 9, 10, and just now starting to pull up. So it's 10 G's in a 3 G direction that the FA requires for a Class 2 uh, device. This is only Class 1, actually has no requirements for a G force limit, but we're testing to Class 2 requirements anyways. So we've seen the uh, fly pad tray and the uh, X, Y, and Z axis were more than 20. I stopped at 16 about uh, seven out of the three, so we're, we've not exceeded just the fly pad tray itself. Now we'll take a, uh, an iPad, no doctoring, it's just all normal here. So the iPad, uh, fly pad tray is put inside the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the iPad is put inside the fly pad tray, and so when we pull the same X, Y, Z requirements, We'll see that, uh, for example, down is pretty obvious. It's not going to go anywhere, but just because uh, somebody wants to see it, it's going to, I'm going to stop at some point because it's, it's 15, 16, 17. There's no reason to go any, any higher than that. I do, don't wish to uh, damage the uh, fly pad or the, uh, the iPad itself. And likewise, when I pull outward on the uh, iPad 7, 8, no, I'm just going to stop there because I don't wish to uh, uh, damage the iPad. But it's uh, at nine. That's uh, nine pounds. It's seven G's coming outward when only three G's is required. And then the uh, next one. By the way, these are all uh, sustained G's on a actual uh, engineering test. They do impulse tests, and it's, it's it retains much better. So even the harder requirement is to do sustained G. So my little hand can only maintain sustained G's. Not very good at impulse. So, but if I uh, if I pull. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, pops at 10.6, and while that's uh, less than the 9 G's normally for a forward, it's uh, right on 8 G's uh, retainability of the iPad to the fly pad tray. We saw the fly pad tray retained to the uh, 737 is well above, so once again we had the uh, forward was uh, right here. Downward was well in excess, so it's well off the chart. For uh, upward and sideward, that G was, uh, I think it was uh, 10, 11, about 7, 7 G, so it was over here as well. So we've met and exceeded on two of the three. The only one that does not exceed, again with a sustained G pull, not with a impulse G pull as you would have in an actual turbulence, but if I do a sustained G-pull again in the forward direction, I'm at 9, 11, 12, and I just broke it 13 right there, so, well, it goes up and down based on my hands. This time it broke it uh, just over 10 Gs. It's between uh, 8 and 10 Gs for the uh, forward, or if we wish to call it the X-axis for this low-tech G-test.